Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're now looking at a hot topic for the day, and it is opportunities and pitfalls of carbon credit in battling climate change. And to discuss that uh, with us, we have uh, Bolanle Akinleyo Para, Senior Officer, Fundraising and Grant Sourcing, NCF. That is a, a Nigerian Conservative uh, Foundation. Good morning and welcome to the program. <laughs> Nigeria, um, um, thank you for having me. Let's just begin with the basics, carbon credit. Uh, let, let us get to know about this and how qualified we are as a nation for this carbon credit. Okay, the term carbon credit, um, for Nigeria, it's um, a term that um, we are very ready for because uh, we have an environment where we can try well in the sense of carbon credit as a country. Um, Nigeria is less. That's why the fact that we have um, degraded a lot of our environment. What do we even call carbon credit? Carbon credit is a permit that you get for offsetting your carbon footprint. So what do I mean by offsetting carbon footprint? As a Nigerian, every Nigerian emits carbon in one way or the other, from our vehicles to our homes, to our industry, from every part of our activities as a nation, we emit carbon. Our nature has so much blessed us um, with um, vegetation that could help us trap carbon. Talk about the mountain environment, the oceans, um, the forest area that we have in Nigeria, the area that help us trap carbon. But um, currently, we have degraded this area, and um, um, Nigeria might have to go back to its original position to be called to have uh, to be eligible to uh, sell the carbon credits to the global world. Um, the source of the carbon credit started um, sometime back in a um, party where people came together, countries came together to start to come up with how to mitigate our uh, pollution and to reduce the carbon emitted in the environment. So, um, in Morocco, countries also came back together to know how we are going to implement this. So the carbon credit activity, Nigeria is a signatory to carbon credit uh, sales, mitigation, and uh, we are also a signatory to ensuring that every member of Nigeria become responsible and accountable for their carbon creation. And we are not going to stop at that also. As a Nigerian, we are also looking at how we are going to be able to sell carbon to the world. So as a country, um, if we have all the factors that are necessary, ready, a rehabilitation for trapping carbon, um, the rights policies in place, then we are ready for carbon credit sale as a nation. Okay, uh, but one of these uh, uh, qualifications for a country to be recognized is uh, the amount of forest, if I'm right. Um, at some point, we had like one of the largest forests in a maybe like crossing the state and some other parts of Nigeria. And so we were ranked among the, the uh, countries that um, are eco-friendly, as it were, because this forest take this carbon and purifies our, our air for us and all that. Are there particular policies that are being put to, uh, together by the government to make sure these forests stay the way they are and then our air is purified for the entire people to enjoy? Um, there, are, there is need for Nigerian government to look at uh, policies that encourage Nigeria to go back to its original culture, where we have uh, our forest intact. If you look back in the days, Nigeria has a culture where we have areas of land within our communities where we conserve and we call those places uh, uh, even forests or whatsoever. It was a uh, our own natural way as a nation to protect um, our forests and to protect our environment. But because we have come to modernization as a nation, we have um, degraded all those areas. If you look at our ocean line, back in the days we used to have what we call, um, uh, what is it called, mangrove forests, which help us to mitigate against flooding, against erosion, against ocean surge. But because we wanted urbanization at 
it's larger to together all those areas and then we are having the feedback. So as a country, we need to come up with policies that encourage every Nigeria to own a tree, to own a tree as a person, to own a tree as a community, to own a tree as a state, to own a tree as a nation. And especially the carbon, the blue carbon, which is the area where you can actually keep a lot of carbon. That's our ocean. We are very as a nation to, to, to be ready for carbon credits. But because of the degradation um, problem we are having currently, we are not there yet. So we need to have a policy where every company that emits carbon is mandated to come up with um, 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 a, an offsetting project to create environment for carbon for Nigeria. And I tell you, Nigeria starts, if we do that, then our nation will be blessed because we will not be selling carbon to other people across the, across the globe who are countries from other um, parts of the world coming to Nigeria. And let's see, um, Saudi Arabia had to go to Kenya to buy 2.2 million tons of carbon to, to offset the activities in their own country. Nigeria has not much more than what Kenya has, and we can get a lot of revenue from that. Okay, so, so our topic, yeah. Our topic is opportunities and pitfalls of carbon credit in battling climate change. Walk us through these. What are the opportunities therein? What are the pitfalls of this carbon credit? Okay. Um, as I told you, the carbon credit is a new area for Nigeria to explore. And it's an area where we have a lot of opportunities. Uh, for carbon credit, it will help us to come up with a um, project that will reduce our carbon emissions. Because as Niger every Nigerian wishes to own a car, and that way um, we can all uh, offset our carbon. Apart from that, we can also create green jobs. We can create a lot of jobs for Nigerians that are jobless. We have so many um, Nigerian youth that need to be engaged. Carbon credit to create new jobs for them. We have also sustainable energy. Um, we have uninterrupted energy because by the time we start going to carbon credit um, and carbon offsetting projects, we are going to be having our power sector be generated from wind, being generated from biomass. We will be having um, power generated from even plants. So as a nation, there will be a lot of opportunities for us. Apart from that, there will also be improvement in that oh, foreign Nigeria are going to an economy meltdown where we have um, uh, an average Nigeria living below one dollar. But um, with the carbon credit project, Nigerians will be able to be higher than the current uh, income because now your livelihood will be improved, your biodiversity that stands as means of livelihood will be improved, and then we also have food security. Remember that the forest serves as home. So the raw materials that we use in producing almost all our food. By the time when this area is protected, then we have improved ceilings that can produce for just when we used to have that today. We have to have with our own and then they can go into a forest to get a lot of things that are not available. So we have a lot of them. However, the, there are challenges to these uh, carbon credit activities. The challenges of the pitfall of carbon credit is that we are afraid that uh, the polluters might continue polluting because uh, because they believe that they have done carbon project activities. They might want to continue polluting the environment. They might feel like, okay, I have um, planted somewhere, and as such, nobody is supposed to stop me from polluting. So we might have what we call the greenwashing, where people would uh, pollute because they want to, they have a project that is expected to offset. Also, we might have an overestimated emission reduction. Um, because currently we don't have the, what we call um, the forest valuation system in Nigeria yet. So we might have a situation where somebody just plants uh, maybe like 500 trees and the person feels that I can pollute the entire Lagos and continue polluting as a result of that. So those are some of the challenges we might have. Now we might also have challenges with our policies and implementation of the policies. If we do not have the right policies in place, then the, the, the concept of carbon credits, Nigeria may not be able to implement like other places in the world. We might also have um, um, ability to uh, economies to test some new technologies that might cause a lot of 
damage to our environment. So we might have that challenge also. And we might also have displacement of people. A lot of people might be displaced from their communities because of carbon projects. Yeah, when people have uh, um, ability to to overrule a community, they might just displace them because of that. So we have some of these challenges as um, um, peaceful that might come as a result of carbon for this project. Okay, why? When you talk about um, deliberate policies that will address these issues, what are some of the provisions you would like to see in a policy like that? If the government were to make a policy that will guard against the challenges that you're looking at, what kind of things do you want to be in that policy? Okay, um, for Nigerian policy, for, for Nigeria to start implementing the carbon credit project, I'd like to see the following policy. I'd like to see a policy where there is a face to the people in the policy that is being made to Nigeria. A policy that puts people in the, in the face. A policy that says Nigeria is one of the first beneficiaries from the... Uh, um, uh, Dividend or revenue generated from um, the carbon credit. What do I mean? When you're going into a community to do a tree planting, out of the 100% revenue you are going to be generating as for the from the carbon credit in that community, the community should get at least 50% of that um, income. That should be number one. Number two, the community should be involved in whatever policy the government is making. It should not be a government government team. So a lot of people that, that also have a say in whatever policy is being made. Number three, whatever country or whoever is buying this carbon credit, they should also be um, a little room for the community to make their livelihood from the carbon um, from the carbon project. So I like to say we have protect the environment first, the people second, and Nigerian as a whole. Okay. So eventually we have this event coming up on the 28th of uh, this month. The, is it 22nd, I think, of this month? 28th. No, 28th, 28. yes. It is the 22nd uh, uh, edition of that event, the Chief SLA Do Memorial mm -hmm. Lecture. And it eventually has the same theme, carbon credit opportunities and pitfalls. Uh, if you have information about it, please let us know what it is, because it is an interesting thing. It would be an interesting thing to attend, especially now that I'm seeing that the attendance is free and all that. So uh, tell us uh, more about this event. Okay, the the June second SLEDU the memorial lecture. It's a lecture that um, the Nigerian Conservation Foundation, which is the foremost environmental NGO in Nigeria, that has been in existence for over 40 years, has been doing every year to actually educate Nigerians on um, what to expect in the environment. And this year we are coming up with a very interesting topic called carbon credit, the pitfall and the opportunities. We are come calling experts. We are inviting experts from countries where this has been implemented to talk to Nigeria, to educate Nigeria. Now we know that Nigeria is a signature to that treaty. We know that um, there is an agency that has been uh, um, delegated to handle the carbon credits for Nigeria. So we come up with this again, lecture so that we can educate Nigeria to learn what to expect um, in terms of opportunity, to know what to. Um, to ask for when your community is being selected as an area for projects. Number two, to also um, be aware of some challenges that might be um, associated with um, this kind of projects, and also to ask for mitigation from the implementers. Currently, the Nigeria Conservation Foundation we are planting across the nation, across Nigeria um, because our forest has been degraded up to 7% and we are planning to recover it up to 25% right now. So from this lecture, we invite all Nigerians to be in attendance because it's free and um, we want them to come and learn from the experts and also to know how to negotiate when they want to sell the, their carbon in their community so we invite all nigeria okay well the most important people that need to know about this will be the policy makers what is the level of interaction between the nigerian um, uh, conservation foundation and policy makers 
uh, people in government and all that. And are we expecting some of them in this event that is coming up on the 28th? Okay, yes. Um, the Nigerian Conservation Foundation don't, you don't just serve as the face of the people, you also serve as the face of the government. So, expect all the government um, people, every body in power, we are saying that invitation is done for them, and we hope that they will honor this invitation to come around so that they can uh, also learn and also air out some of the ideas and make some of this. Together. So, expecting all um, all experts in policies, all the policymakers, we are expecting them. Even up to the president, we are expecting uh, President Bola Ahmed to be in attendance of this conference. But so far, how has the, the relationship been, you know, between the NFC, uh, NCF and, and government? Has, even though you're working for the government in, in part, but how has the relationship been like? How has the response to this call for uh, deliberate attempts to to make these policies that will will look into the issues that you've just addressed, being like you know between the N NCF and and, and government. Um, our relationship has been cordial. That means uh, we have been uh, like a technical partner to the government at all level, from the local level to the federal level. Uh, we have been. Um, it will interest you to know that the current endangered species decree that the Nigerian, that is inside Nigerian uh, law today, emanated from the Nigerian Conservation Foundation. We, we don't just uh, need the government to do it alone because sometimes you know they can't get to the grassroots. And we know we can be everywhere across Nigeria. So our relationship has been cordial. Some of our um, suggestions have been um, adopted. We the current carbon credit uh, policy we are seeing today, the Nigerian Conservation Foundation, um, we actually negotiated that with the government, we told them about it, and uh, when we attend the club together, and uh, the relationship has been very, very cordial, and so, um, we know the uh, challenges with government um, adopting a um, new concept, um, but we also give them time, we educate them, we lobby them to also um, I've done some of these things, and so our relationship has been very cordial. Okay. What is your level of interaction with the grassroots, you know, schools, churches, uh, communities, and all that, to, to preach this gospel, as it were, to the, the, the average Nigerian, to key into this because it, it can be done by the government alone or NCF alone. The people have to key in. So what is your program like? What is your level of interaction like with the people who will carry uh, this, um, this fight and this gospel as it were? Okay, so um, as a function, we know that we can't just stay up there as, as a an organization, you know, we can't just stay up there and don't get to the people. So, across Nigeria, I want to call the Conservation Club in schools, uh, where we educate Nigerian children on about their environment, what they have, and how to own it. And I saw that we have what we call the site support group, where we have um, some, group, some groups of people from various communities um, supporting their own community natural heritage. Um, we don't do it everywhere, we do it to some communities across Nigeria. Um, currently, we are advocating, we are inviting Nigerians to invite us to their communities to create the site support group. Uh, if you have a, a, a community where you have a natural, um, a natural resources, I mean, an environmental natural resources, like a forest, like a, a natural spring, um, an ocean <laughs> behind your community. We expect you to submit it so that you can come to your community to create what we call the site support group. The site support group are like ambassador of the community um, and um, all, all the resources. The reason why we are doing this is this. We know that Nigeria very soon will be moving away from dependence on oil to our natural resources. And every Nigerian should understand that our natural resources will be our fallback for most of our livelihood. 
we be getting from our natural resources in the nearest future. So we are creating this site support group to help you to know as a Nigeria that um, in the nearest future, you might not be living on the white collar job anymore. You might be depending on the natural resources from your own community. So the time is now for you to protect it. And that is how we get to all the grassroots across Nigeria, from the west to the east to the north and to the southern part of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good way to drop it, but um, let me just give you another opportunity to just talk generally to Nigerians on this issue we are facing today. A general um, or a final word uh, before we wrap it up, please. Um, apart from that, uh, the carbon credit uh, issue, they will be coming up with a lot of advocacy very soon, going to different communities. They will be on social media, will be on your radio, will be on your newspaper, you will see us on your TikTok, you will see us everywhere. We will go to the communities where we don't have... Uh, where you don't have access to all those things. Nigerian Conservation Foundation will be there. But remember that conservation without funding is mere conversation. So we, are, we invite all um, stakeholders, companies across Nigeria to support Nigerian Conservation Foundation to achieve this goal of um, tree planting in communities. Well, we're currently doing that. In June, we'll start our tree planting in communities. If you know that your community has a land that you can give to us, and you're sure you can protect it for the future, please um, go to our website, www.nigerianconservationnigeria.org. Um, drop your community details there and tell us uh, where the located the land is and how we can come over to plant there. But you should be assured that the Nigerian Conservation Foundation will be there. We will be in every community and we will we'll make provision to ensure that Nigerian environment is protected for the current generation and the future generations. We are not looking at today alone. We know our children, we are preserving, we are buying these environments for them now, for them to be able to use. So we are available for every community. We are in communities and um, we create our um, um, activities in all those communities. Okay. Um, we'd like to thank you, Bolanle, for coming on the show and uh, letting us know uh, what is up. Uh, the, the, the opportunities are far greater uh, than uh, what the challenges are. So if, so if we look at the opportunities, we will strive harder to make sure that we key into this. We'd like to thank you for coming on the program this morning. Well, we've been talking with Bolanli Akinleye Opara, Senior Officer, Fundraising and Grant Sourcing at Nigerian Conservation Foundation. And uh, we were looking at the opportunities and um, uh, pitfalls of carbon credit in battling climate change. And this is where we wrap it up on the breakfast this morning. On behalf of my entire crew, uh, my name is Nyamgul Agaji, wishing you a very wonderful midweek. <music>